inspiring native camp teachers. It's teacher Karen here, and we're finally going to be making a video about the new demo class materials here in native camp. So for the past um, 12 months or so, uh, we've been using the two materials for grammar, which would be, um, would you mind me closing the door and something about NATO. Well, uh, recently I've been receiving emails and comments that the admins are asking the um, applicants to, to teach daily news. So we're gonna be talking about one of the possible textbooks that, that the admin could ask you to, to teach for your demo class. And I will be sharing my screen to give you tips and tricks on how to pass your demo class. And um, just take note, teacher, um, it's quite challenging to pass your native camp demo class simply because the admins here are very strict. Thing is, we don't really have a trainer. Like um, once you get in as a tutor, you will not be having like a one-on-one -on -one or a group class with a tutor, uh, rather with a trainer to, to learn more about the processes. What's gonna happen actually is that everything is about self-learning. Right. So you got to figure out how to do things on your own. That's why admins are very strict. And one error, like one slip or one SOP that you forgot to do, most likely you're going to be for retake. And if you are really unlucky, then you would have to wait six months. So if you want to pass your your uh, native camp demo class, uh, please watch this video. We're going to be focusing on the article called Drinking Tea and Coffee Can Lower the Risk of Dementia and Stroke. So teachers, uh, right now I'm sharing my um, screen. And we're just going to be focusing on the daily news article that the admins are going to ask you to teach. So daily news is basically um, teaching the student a different new vocabulary and encouraging them to speak and express themselves. But the topic's going to be revolving on recent articles. Let's say for your demo class, we're going to talk about drinking tea and coffee can lower the risk of dementia and stroke. So this is like an article made last January 26, 2002, or 2022, or 2022. And sorry, I'm not myself. It's uh, 1242 in the morning. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about how to cover this article. So um, notice that when you are doing your demo class, the script is already given to you. So on your demo, strictly follow the script. Um, just an FYI, once you're already in, you don't really have to strictly follow the script as long as you're like, you know, saying the same thing uh, or the same meaning as whatever is written on the script. But since it's your demo, they're, you know, testing how how you follow instructions and how you do what you're supposed to do. So for now, we're going to be sticking with the um, we're going to be sticking with the script. And just an FYI. Um, a tip for you to pass your demo class is to use my class flow template. I'm going to be putting it on the description box and basically it's going to show you the flow of your demo class and remind you of the things that you're supposed to say, like checking with the student if they can hear you, if they can see you, uh, when to use the chat box, what you're supposed to put on the chat box and so on. So it's on the class flow template. I highly recommend that you check it on the description box and uh, you could use it on your demo class to guide you and remind you of the things that you're supposed to do. Because again, if you forget to do it, then sorry you got to retake or wait six months so going back to this one we're going to stick to this script uh please do not forget to uh say that we're going to study daily news and we have to uh say the title of of the lesson and verify it with the student let's say we're going to study daily news in this lesson the title is drinking tea and coffee can lower the risk of dementia and stroke is this correct so 
Uh, one of the steps on your demo class is the importance of verifying the material with the student. So uh, you just got to ask them, is this correct after uh, saying the lesson and the title of the lesson. Now, uh, on the words and phrases, you see that there are two types of pronunciation available, the US American pronunciation and UK would be the British pronunciation. Uh, we do know that they have different pronunciation, right? For example, um, American pronunciation would be advertisement. Uh, British pronunciation is advertisement. So you have to play this recording once once for the US pronunciation, American pronunciation, and once for the UK pronunciation. You know, if your student asks you what's US pronunciation or UK pronunciation, so just simply uh, let them know that there are there are several English words with two different pronunciations. One would be American English, and then the other one would be British English. And mind you, teaches, um, admins in native camp are quite tricky. They're gonna trap you. They're gonna ask trap questions. So it's not enough that you know how to follow the script and you know, you know how to do what you're supposed to do because sometimes they're gonna ask you trap questions. Let's say dementia, they're gonna ask you what part of speech is dementia? And you're like, part, part of speech? What's part of speech? So uh, it's already here, it's a noun. Uh, a part of speech would be, is it a noun, an adjective, an adverb, a verb, and so on, a preposition, blah, blah, blah. So uh, what I also recommend teachers to do is during your demo class, it's best that you have other windows open on top of your native camp demo window. What do I mean by that? Teacher, you are not expected to know all the answers in the world. As an English teacher, there are times when your student asks you a question and you're like, I forgot about that already because I haven't you know, studied that. Last time I studied that part of speech or that, that word was when I was in elementary or high school. So you gotta use Google. Um, I recommend using Cambridge Dictionary, having a thesaurus to, to determine synonyms, um, antonyms. Um, it's also best that you have Google search engine so that you can like type uh, questions if you don't know the answer. Because the admins here will ask you trap questions, right? And what if you you froze? What if you really don't know the answer? You, you just have to know where to find the answer. So um, going back to words and phrases, uh, once again, follow the script. Uh, let's start here. Let's learn some of the words that are used in the article. Let's have the first word. I'll play the audio for the US pronunciation once and please listen to the audio well. Uh, so, all right. Oh, it says on the script, it says on the script that you would just have to play the one with the US pronunciation. So this is going to be like the, the tricky part. Um, let, let's try to change the level. There are two levels for the daily news. Uh, one is level 8-9. This is for like advanced level and one is level 4-5. You also have to listen to the admin on which of the two you're supposed to cover for your demo class. So let's see level 8-9. Uh, please click play button, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Okay, so on the script, it just says, uh, you just have to play the US pronunciation once. Uh, but on the training kit, it says there that you have to play the US pronunciation once and the UK pronunciation once, but you have to actively listen. Guys, again, there are tons of traps when you have your demo class. So maybe the student would say, oh, I only want to learn the British English pronunciation, please. And you're like, what? And then you, you failed to listen and you still played the US pronunciation. So you also have to pay attention to what the admin says. If they say that I only want to listen or learn about the British English pronunciation, then you play the UK recording. If they say that I only want to learn American English, then you play US. But again, the SOP when it comes to the, you know, how to teach daily news based on the learning kit is you have to uh, uh, play the US pronunciation once and the UK pronunciation once. So uh, we're going to play that once and then you would have to uh, read the definition 
So hold on, please. Uh, there you go. You have to read the definition. Uh, for example, consumption, the act of eating or drinking something. And then for the sample sentence, you have to read this once and you have to have the student repeat after you once. So Native Camp is kind of big on repetition. So there are things that you got to uh have the student repeat once things that you have to have the student repeat thrice so just simply read the script it says here that they have to repeat after you once now usually for the definition it's the teacher who's supposed to read that when you you know base it on what the learning kit taught us the act of eating or drinking something in the event that the admin reads the definition the act of eating or drinking something and you know that based on the SOP, you're supposed to be the one reading it, not the student. Do not cut the admin off because, you know, that could affect their motivation. That can make them feel bad as a student that, you know, they're trying to give you the initiative of, you know, reading it for you, but you, you kind of made them feel bad. So just in case the student reads the definition, acknowledge them for that. Oh, you're not supposed to do that, but thank you so much for reading it. I appreciate it. Right. So you, you got to be vigilant. You have to be alert on what's going on. So let's go back to the easier level, level four dash five. OK, so uh, we're back. Uh, these are the words that you have to cover. So here's the thing for your admin. They're not really going to have you conduct your demo class for like 25 minutes. They're going to ask you to jump from one part to the other. Let, let's say they would say, uh, OK, let's now move on to the listening focus. Let's now move on to answer the questions. So you have to pay attention to what they're saying. Uh, again, actively listen. So about the words, what are the usual trap questions that they could ask you? As mentioned earlier, what part of speech is this and that? Uh, sometimes they can also ask you questions like, how can we use the word dementia in a sentence? Can you give me an example? So in that case, you, you really have to know these words by heart and you have to come up with um, a sentence. For example, if they ask me for a sample sentence, I'd say, elderly people are prone to having dementia uh, or let's say my aunt has dementia that's why she has trouble remembering things so i basically know it by heart that um uh, dementia is has something to do with your your thought processes so uh, if you're not really sure about what dementia is so it's involved in thinking remembering and reasoning but the definition here is it's a mental illness <laughs> so um uh dementia doesn't only pertain to a mental illness remember uh, i said my aunt has dementia that's why she has trouble remembering things because again dementia is a loss of cognitive functioning and like remembering so that could be an example so as you can see i had to google it on the spot just to make sure that the definition that i know is actually correct so Again, we teachers are not expected to know everything. Um, now, moving forward, another question that they could hear, uh, that they could ask you, uh, let's say for cure. Um, it says here, something such as a drug or medical treatment that stops a disease and makes someone healthy again. They could ask you random questions like, what's a disease? Or can you give me um, a disease that doesn't have a cure? Here you're like, what? A disease that doesn't have a cure? So you can like Google it. And I believe HIV or AIDS doesn't have a cure, right? So uh, so those are the words you, you gotta be, you gotta know them by heart and you have to be quick. Let's say if they ask you a trap question uh, and you don't know the answer, use Google. Now for the comprehension part, um, uh, oh, by the way, another tip, let's not forget to use the chat box. Uh, there are so many things that you have to write on the chat box. Uh, one would be your name, the student's name, and the answers to the questions from the lesson. Um, you also have to put on the chat box any errors when it comes to grammar and whatever your correction is, you have to put it on the chat box. In other words, let's say they made um, an incorrect sentence. Let's say the girls, the girls likes to walk. 
And you do know that it's supposed to be the girls like to walk. So you have to write the incorrect one, the girls likes to walk on the chat box. And you put the correction, the girls like to walk, and you put that on the chat box as well. Now for the comprehension part, uh, basically you just have to read the question to the student once. What was the fourth leading cause of death in Brazil in 2020? What effect did drinking three to six cups of both tea and coffee per day have? Why did a neurologist say this study was important? So you're going to read that question, right? And then all of a sudden, the student would ask you a trap question. What's a neurologist? And you're like, what? I'm like, uh, um, I'm like, uh, B is, uh, no, 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 I'm like an, an engineering graduate and I don't know what a, uh, what neurologist is. So if you don't know it, Google it. But again, a neurologist is like someone who who studies the brain. So if, if in that case, I know it, right? So I'll just put it on the chat box. A neurologist is someone who uh, focuses or studies the brain or neurologist, I'll put it on Google. Uh, there you go, a medical doctor who diagnose, uh, diagnoses, treats, and manages disorders of the brain. So turns out my, the definition that I know is incorrect. So it's always best to like refer to Google. Uh, that's what I did during my demo. Uh, I like double check everything on Google because who knows, since that was a trap question, what if what I know is incorrect? So double check it with Google. Um, now, uh, for the article, you just have to simply play the button here press the play button rather, and then the student would have to listen to it. So you have to check with them. Uh, can you hear it? Okay, can you hear the article? And then you play it. Um, just in case you can't hear it on your side, what's important is the student hears it. So um, when you are playing the article, never ever do other things like talk to someone, use your phone or like slouch or whatever. So what I usually do is as I listen to it, I, I read it as well uh, because I wanna make sure that I know the article by heart. So I read it, I kind of react to what I hear like, hmm, like that, like that. And then I also, anticipate this is the keyword anticipate possible questions that the student would have about the article let's say about this one um those who drank two or three cups of unmixed coffee or tea had 12 percent uh and a 16 percent lower risk of stroke the student may ask what's a stroke because i the stroke that i know is like in writing stroke or uh, like in swimming, breaststroke, whatever stroke, right? So the, the student may ask what, what stroke. So again, Google on standby if you wanna double check and so that you're prepared to answer questions. If the student asks what's a stroke and then you're gonna Google it stroke, uh, stroke is a serious life threatening, blah, 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 blah. I'll just copy this definition and then I'll put it on the chat box. So now that we're done with the article, um, we're now going to be proceeding to answering the questions. So I'll read each question and please say your answers out loud. So you read the question followed by the options and then uh, you just have to simply paste the, the students answers on the chat box. Let's say their answer is dementia. You got to put it on the chat box. What I usually do, even though it's not really uh, something that we're supposed to do is I still copy and paste the question on the chat box and I put a student's answer. If the student answer is incorrect, I put the correct answer on the chat box. Once again, teachers, uh, chat box is life when it comes to your demo class. And the only difference when it comes to answer the question, let's say this one is level 4-5, and I told you that there's another one level 8-9, um, which is for more advanced learners. So in that case, for answer the questions there, it's not really a multiple choice question, but something that would encourage a student to think, something that would really test their listening comprehension and their speaking skills. So um, if this was a more difficult uh, level, then it only includes the question, what was the fourth leading cause of death in Brazil? Uh, let me just show you. Uh, this is an example. Mm, there you go. What did the study show was linked to the daily consumption of coffee and tea? So there's like a sample answer there and there's a reason available. And again, it's in blue font. So basically it just shows you uh, the possible answer. Everything in blue font is intended to help the teacher and you're not really supposed to say it out loud. So uh, in this case, let's say your, your 
material is level 8-9. You put the question on the chat box and you also type their answers. Uh, they say, let's say what the answer is, uh, the study show the daily consumption, blah, 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 blah. You have to put it on the chat box. And if there are any errors on grammar, you have to correct it. You put the incorrect sentence followed by the correction. And then if there are any errors with pronunciation, you have to listen and correct them. Let's say they mispronounce something. Um, what did the study show was link to the daily consumption of coffee and tea? Let's say they didn't say it with a T sound, linked. They say link. So you put it on the chat box. Uh, could you please say this again for me? Linked. One more time, please. Linked. There you go. So uh, you have to give the corrections as well. Now, um, let's go back to the easier material, easier level rather. So you're already done with the listening part, with answering the questions. Now for the readout, um, the student would have to read the article and you have to listen to their pronunciation and you have to type the words on the chat box and notice that for mispronounced words, they have to, to repeat it after you twice. So let's say uh, they mispronounce dementia. They say it as dementia. Oh, can you please say this again? Dementia. Say it again, please. Dementia. Dementia. So you, the student would have to repeat after you twice. Now for the discussion part, this is like the free talk part. Uh, you ask them a question and it's related to the article, but not really about the article. So again, I still put the question on the chat box, even though we're not really, you know, supposed to do that anymore. It's too too much work. So just put the question and then I type the student's answer. Then I give any feedback about it, maybe grammar or pronunciation. And then for the next part, there's also one about the sample answer. Uh, and uh, based on the learning kit, you, you could you put the sample answer on the chat box after they've already answered. So let's say they've already given their answer about, do you think it is important for scientists to conduct dementia-related research? So they, so they say, yeah, I think it's important because uh, we would be able to help a lot of elderly and sickly people, blah, 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 and give them a better quality of life. So they've already answered. You've already given your feedback. Uh, based on the learning kit, we have to paste the sample answer after all of that and ask them to read it too. Okay. Now for the last part, when you're done with the lesson, um, you just have to put the three new words and phrases that they've learned the lesson. They have to repeat after you three times, even though you would sound like a broken record. Let's say they mispronounce the word furthermore. So furthermore, 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 furthermore. And then another word that they mispronounce is uh, again, linked, 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 linked. Okay, so you're going to sound like a broken record there. And then three difficult to pronounce words uh, or, or mispronounced words. Uh, difficult to pronounce would be either mispronounced words by the student or, you know, words that you think are difficult that you would want the student to say in practice. So Again, um, your demo class will not last for 25 minutes. So there you go, teachers. Um, for aspiring teachers, don't be intimidated. Y yeah, it's, <laughs> it's kind of stressful to have your demo. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, with nine years of teaching experience, I thought I would pass my first demo class, my first attempt, but I failed. And I was like, oh, wow, this is a learning opportunity for me. I didn't really, you know, uh, feel depressed over it. Uh, I really just did my best to make sure that the next time I, I take my demo class, I'd pass. And yeah, I did pass. Um, so there you go. I hope you learned something from this one. Um, once again, please refer to the description box if you want to use my class flow template. And in the next days or weeks to come, I will be posting content about the other uh, material that would be possibly used for your demo class. It's another daily news material. So you guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, Teacher Karen, and uh, comment below if you have any questions or if you have any like insights to share based on your experience when you had your demo, please feel free to share it because I learn a lot from you guys. So all of these things that I'm sharing with you, it's also based on research, comments from other teachers and forums and so on. So feel free to comment. I will respond as soon as possible. And uh, if you 
are aspiring teacher and you want to you know be a native camp teacher all you have to do is send me an email as well at teacherkaren at gmail.com i'll send you tips and tricks to pass there you go teacher um i hope you learned something it's already one in the morning so i'll see you on my next video be a blessing to the people around you ciao bye bye mm -hmm.